Welcome everybody and thank you for joining us today. Um, my name is Andrew Sinclair and I'm the Business Development Manager in the Commercial Team for Northumbrian Water um, and I'm going to kind of um, host today's um, National Apprenticeship Week uh, questions and answer session. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get everybody to introduce themselves um, just to give a little bit of uh, information on who, who's on the screen um, and we'll, we'll continue on from questions from there. So if, if we we'll start with Alison. Hello, just in case you can hear any background noise, I have got children around <laughs> around here today. Um, but my name's Alison and I work in early careers at Northumbrian Water. And one of uh, part of my role is to support the apprentices during their development at our organisation, but also uh, the recruitment process with that as well. Uh, and Alex? Morning everyone, I'm Alex and also work in early careers and the focus that we are really looking at at the minute is around how do we attract and not just attract from the usual universities and colleges but how do we attract from different areas of the, of the country because we're not just North East based, we are Essex and Suffolk and then also once we attract what are the opportunities within Northern Mere Water Group through apprentices, through sponsored placements, through undergrads, and then how do we support them through that journey? So what's their learning journey look like? So I'm very excited to be on here today. Thank you. And Erin. Yeah, morning everyone. Um, I'm Erin Price and I work in the same team as Alison and Alex at Northumbrian Water. And um, my role is really focusing on making sure again that we make Northumbrian Water a really attractive employer so that people want to come to work for us. And then once you're in, you have a brilliant time at work, you enjoy it, you learn a lot and that you can develop your career um, at Northumbrian Water. Brilliant. We've um, we've also um, potentially got a couple of our um, apprentices at the minute who are going to join us. Um, but we've, we've had a few IT issues this morning, as as is the the way forward now. So um, Emily's on there, and I'm going to unmute her mic, and I'm hoping that if that unmutes. So I'm Emily. I'm an apprentice in the water distribution network based down in Teesside, and I've been with the business for touching 18 months now, and I'm halfway through my diploma for um, water engineering. That's brilliant. We're, we're glad we've managed to at least get your microphone working this morning to get you on there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and hopefully James might be able to join us in, uh, in, a, in a few more minutes as well. So what, what I'll do is I'll just kind of move on to the frequently asked questions. So these are the, the questions that we get asked a lot. Um, we just thought this was a pretty good place to start. Um, but again, just remember this, this is about this is about you. It's not about us just telling you about us. Um, so if you've got questions, if you type them into that um, questions box, they'll pop up um, and I'll, I'll, I'll make sure they get answered either at the end or I'll, I'll swap them in where I think is, is appropriate. So the, the first question that we, we get asked a lot about is sort of like why are apprenticeships important at NWG? Yeah, so apprenticeships are hugely important to us as a business. Um, we're really committed to making sure that we have apprenticeship opportunities and that we can give people a really good career working in the water industry. Um, so we have people in our business who've worked with us for decades and have a huge amount of knowledge in what they do. And we want to make sure that we build a workforce for the future. So we have people who are excited about working in the water industry, can come in, can learn from all the people in our business who've got a huge amount of experience. And if you want, you know, spend your career with us. Um, so it's about building a workforce for the future. You know, I also think that apprentices come into our business with fresh ideas. Um, everyone's coming from different backgrounds, different levels of experience, and you play a huge part in making us think about things differently. So when you know someone's talking to you about how we do a particular job, apprentices are brilliant at asking the question, why do you do it that way? Could we do it in a different way? So we learn just as much from our apprentices as you learn from people who work in our business. So hugely important and we're really kind of committed and as I said delighted that we've been able to provide apprenticeship opportunities kind of year on year for people in a variety of different areas of the business which I'm sure we'll share more of you, um, about during this webinar. Brilliant. So, um, so one of the questions that we do get asked quite a lot is like, so how many apprentices do we take on a year? Because obviously we're, we're a reasonably large business, and I suppose that's probably one of the questions. What's the opportunity for me? So, how many apprenticeships do we do we generally take on? So, over the last few years, since we embarked on the apprenticeship programs, it's it's increased year on year, which is fantastic, and that's down to our apprentices, because if it wasn't working for us, we wouldn't want to take more on. So, over the last few years, we've gone from kind of a, from a five to a six in one year, 2019 we had 16, 
And then last year, 2020, we had um, 18 apprentices, which is fantastic. And they, they, they're starting with us now in that program. Is exactly what Erin was saying there. It's about understanding what they need from us, but also they, they share with us what, what we need as well. It's fantastic. Uh, we just had a question actually come in from uh, one of the, uh, the, the delegates in the audience. Um, what the vast is, um, will we have apprenticeships for 16-year-old school leavers? So, Alison, I don't know if you want to answer that one because we've had it in the past. We have had a range of, the, the, to be fair, there is no limit at all for ages from 16 right the way up to, dare I say, 90 odd, if, if you wanted to. If you You're right, the restrictions it. have all been taken off for apprenticeship, so absolutely anybody can, can join us. The only thing I would say is in our engineering roles where you need to drive a vehicle, obviously you need to have a driver's licence, so some of the roles will be restricted. Um, with age in, in, in that you need a driving license to be able to apply. But there are definitely other roles available for, for people to apply for. Cool. We've, we've gone to the question that's come in actually, which kind of ties in with one of the frequently asked questions. So what the vast is are sort of, are apprenticeships just for trade or can you do apprenticeships in different areas of the business as well? Yeah, in, in all directorates. So Northumbrian Water is absolutely huge. And I think everybody thinks of us, um, you know, as, as the company that you see when, when we're digging up the road or when we're fixing the pipes. But actually, there's so many different areas around that as well. So we have human resources. We have a whole customer team, um, communications department, finance, um, Ah, yes, and we have apprenticeships in all of these different areas, whether it's our team uh, colleagues that are upskilling and learning something new or whether it's um, bringing new people into the business. So it's not just for trade. Um, there's, there's two people on here that have done an apprenticeship. Isn't that right, Andrew? So me and you, I think, have yeah. recently studied. I'm, I'm, I'm still in the middle. Well, uh, yeah, I think I'm pretty well. I'm not quite in the middle. I'm almost at the middle of mine. So, yeah, I've started doing the, um, an apprenticeship on a, a digital support technician, which um, is quite different to the, the role that I normally do. Um, so, as I mentioned before, I'm in the commercial department of, of NWG, um, where we support customers, uh, business customers with their sort of water requirements and needs. Um, and yeah, I'm doing a digital support one because I'm normally the person who people come to and say, my computer's broken. Can you give us a bit of a help before they go to our IS team? So it's uh, it's worked out really good. And, you know, I, I didn't think I'd be starting an apprenticeship when I'm sort of pretty much on 40. So um, it probably dispelled some of the maybe the myths that I had around that as well from uh, my time in education when um, you kind of had two routes, which was either you went to university or you went down an apprenticeship or a YTS, I think we called them back in those days. Um, and, and those were only really the two routes. And, the, you know, there was very much a, a push for university um, education when I was at that age. So I, I kind of I fell down that road more than more than had a desire to go down it. And actually, on reflection, if I if, if I went down an apprenticeship route, I don't think I would be any different to where I am now because um, the degree that I got, um, oddly enough, it's in how to treat water and I've never used it while I've worked in business. Um, I've always worked in a commercial environment. So it, it just goes to show you the kind of the, the breadth and um, diversity of job opportunities at NWG and, and kind of the routes that you can take to get there. But yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's good fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, so I suppose the, the the next one is there's um, so what what would be the process for somebody watching today? What would be the process of an apprenticeship opportunity opening up? What would they do as far as applying, and then what's the kind of the journey that they would go on to 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 get to the end of that apprenticeship? I guess we've got quite a a pretty easy recruitment process so we try to make things as simple as possible here and you can apply for any role at Northumbrian Water Group with uh, within three minutes that's one of the the claims that we have so all you need is to put in your CV as far as apprenticeship goes what we're looking for is is the right people with the with the right attitude that really match our business really want to do well think creatively are innovative um, and want to be the best and we we assess that with a gamification tool called Arctic Shores. So we can understand who you are and how you would work in our business 
just by playing a game and that's one of the things we ask you to do at the moment um so you, you you need to put a cv on and you need to be able to play a game and yeah that's about it really brilliant i think i should no, try and play that game without being worried about the rule <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't know if emily wants to share her yeah her, emily, yeah. yeah how she uh, yes yeah, so like Alison has said um i just applied through indeed i just saw the advertisement on indeed just looking for something brand new um, my CV got put forward and accepted and then like you said the Arctic Shore game didn't know what to expect didn't know what people were looking for didn't know should I give up on this game or should I not you know but then I realized at the end of it it was a way of just seeing your personality and seeing how you work with people so um, once you've gone forward from that it was fun from the beginning and then when we, when we went forward from um, the game then we were asked to come in for like an in interview day where we had to do like group tasks and it, from the minute we got in the door it was just fun and relaxing and all your nerves went as soon as you went through the door and just seeing the range of people there was just um i was blown away really because i thought being older and um, being a woman that it was going to be just college age there and it wasn't it was just a wide range of people from different backgrounds so um Truly enjoyed every part of it. To be fair, oh, brilliant. Well, that's, that's, that's great to hear. I think it, it was it was interesting because um, uh, Emily and I were having a, a chat yesterday, and I think one of the things that you brought up, Emily, was the fact that you were you were almost hesitant to apply because you kind of felt it might be a kind of a more male dominated field that you were sort of that the apprenticeship was for, um, and it was kind of you know you, you had a bit of a different experience. I think when you when you went down that journey. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think we both said, you know, when, well, when I finished school, it was pushed forward. If I was going to do an apprenticeship um, with me being a girl, it would have been hairdressing or beauty. Um, and the lads would have gone and done a trade if they weren't wanting to go to college and go down that apprenticeship route straight from school age. So for me to then apply at 34 as a woman, I was, I was very hesitant to do it. But then when I read on the background and looked into uh, Northumbrian water, it was all about diversity, all about getting people from different backgrounds. And I just felt like when I walked in that room and saw that big group of people from all over the northeast and everyone had different jobs. And, you know, I just thought, well, yeah, we've all got a chance here, um, regardless of your background, regardless of your gender. So I, was, I would really, really um, push for people to just go out of the comfort zone and just go for it. You know, there's nothing to lose, really. And just to add there, just then, you know, obviously, thank you, Emily, for sharing your experience, because we do want it to be, I guess, as easy as possible for people to apply. And then when they have an experience with us, if they come along for interview, that they kind of enjoy it. I know it can be really nerve wracking, but that we make you feel at ease so that you can actually enjoy that experience. Um, you know, and when Alison's talking about your CV, again, you know, don't be put off by that. There's, there's templates on Google that you can use. Really, the CV is about us trying to get a bit of a sense of who are you as a person? What are your strengths? So if you don't have any work experience or loads of work experience don't don't be put off put as much information as you can on a cv and and we're much more interested in the person rather than you know anything else to do with skills or obviously you're not going to know how to do the job that's the whole part of an apprenticeship is that you come in and we teach you but if you've got a really open mindset if you're interested to learn um, and kind of want to put it all into this then that's the kind of person that we're looking for yeah, no, that's great. There's, there's literally a question came through as you were answering that one, Erin, where it was it was saying, so what kind of things are you looking for in a school leaver CV? Because due to COVID, there's just no opportunities for for those those, those kids who've been kind of stuck yes. in this kind of thing for a year, where they haven't been able to go out and get that experience. But I think the the thing that we'll probably want to get across the most today around that is it's it's about you as an individual, not what tickets or certificates you've got on the end of it that you know that has a place but in reality what we want is we want people who want to work for nwg and you know sort of fit with our our visions and values and how does that set with yours as well as an individual um so you know don't don't be worried or concerned about the send the cv in just send the cv in and then come in and be yourself because that's what's going to win you the position it's about you not about the cv that's just a 
a thing that we need to kind of start introducing ourselves to people. So no, yeah, yeah brilliant. Um, so I suppose uh, we're, we're hoping to have um, uh, James on as well today, but he's, I think he's stuck in snow. Um, which um, you know, if you're in the northeast and you look at the window, it's um, it, it's varying in different places. Um, but I suppose Emily, if if you wouldn't mind, um, sort of giving us a, a kind of day in the life of what you do um, on, as part of uh, your apprenticeship. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so basically, I got took on the water network side. So um, there's four specific roles which I'm learning of the. Well, I'm in the middle of it over three year course. So basically, I'll go off the first role, which is um, distribution technician, which is the face to face customer service. So if anybody's at home and they don't have water coming through the taps, we'll be the ones who go and try and um, figure out why is there any leaks? Is there anything stopping that water coming through that we can fix there and then? Um, if we can't fix it, then we'll we'll get some support from senior technicians and we'll we'll do some um like investigation on, on the network around the house and around the area. And then we'll see if um, we can locate if there's any issues, any leaks, for instance, and the team would then come along and fix that. Um, so basically, you get up and you're in your van um, for about half seven for your first job for eight o'clock. And then your jobs will come through um, as appointments. That's for distribution technician. And then you just have to make sure that you're reporting back what you're finding everywhere you go. And um, you're finishing up home by about quarter past four. But the job is so, especially the job that I'm doing, um, so different every day. And because I'm learning, it's just so exciting to go out and see what, what the day is going to bring. And the people that I've met and the people that are training me, like you said, we've been in the company for like for some of them 40 odd years. So the, the amount of knowledge they have, um, we've been pushed to try and take as much knowledge as we can off them um, before they get to that point where they retire and leave with it. So I think it's really interesting. And I, I suppose that that would be with every job role that you offer as an apprentice. It won't just be the field work. It would be, like you said, Alison, there's so many different jobs, isn't there? Seven yeah, seven hundred and forty, I think it is, in, in the organization. Yeah. My word. From geohydrologists to bat conservationists, it's just fantastic. So many opportunities. I often wonder about bat cons. Can I do that? Maybe 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 one day I might, I might progress. <laughs> but funnily enough, I had a job that I was dealing with where we had to um, in, involve our uh, conservation team because there was um Great crested newts evolved, uh, mm -hmm. sorry, involved in it. So we had to go through um, quite a few hoops and ladders to be before we could yeah. put spades in the ground and things like that. So it just kind of goes to show you again that kind of breadth of opportunity that's that that, that we offer. Um, yeah. And and I think one one thing that I would probably say as well is um, with sort of I've been in the business for quite a while, um, and and the amount of opportunities once you're in a particular role to go and do something else as a secondment for 12 months or 18 months to go and try something new and that can lead to other avenues that can take you into different departments so don't think that you know if you're going to go through an apprenticeship to do one particular role that that's going to be your role and that's that's your trajectory for the rest of your career it, it isn't where we are there's there's plenty of opportunity to kind of come in and say well i, I like doing that but i'd like to try this moving across to that and then that might be your career path or you might even move again um i know people in the business who um rarely stay in the same role for kind of more than two to three years they kind of they just go and do different things so don't think that it's just once you're in that's your job and that's the path you've got to follow there's plenty of other opportunities in there as well so it's it's always worth kind of bearing that in mind when um when you're starting out on your journey with 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 whole business just to add to that andrew i think that is the huge benefit of it because you know you might be sitting going like, well, what Emily's talked about sounds really interesting or you might think oh I'd want to do something a bit different and that's what the apprenticeship gives you for a lot of them it's that rotation where you can spend time doing different roles and go that's not for me you didn't enjoy that for whatever reason but I learned a lot but move into something and go oh this is exactly what I want to do and you don't often get you know the chance to do that with other things you usually just apply for a role and you're in doing it but as Andrew said, you have so much flexibility to think about what you enjoy, what you don't enjoy, so that you can end up in a job that's actually the right job for you, that you kind of um, plays to your strengths. I think that's definitely something to think about with apprenticeships. 
Mm-hmm. I think oh, I think sorry. from a sorry I think from a apprentice apprenticeship side, um, obviously when you're applying to it, you think, oh God, I don't know nothing about that. Um, it's totally out of my league. I, I'm I'm not scientific. I'm not a technician. I'm not an engineer. Um, but the amount of training that you go through, and obviously I'm getting put through my diploma, it's just brand new learning, and you never feel uncomfortable on the job. Um, you're, you're well supported and when you're actually physically doing that work you see why um you've been taken on for that role if that makes sense like it suits your personality if you're customer service based that's why you've got that side of the job um but then on the other side if you think oh well i actually prefer this role or my strengths lie with that managers are all open to that and just saying you know if that's the route that you would like to go down then go down it yeah yeah, absolutely. I mean, my, my experience in that has always been that my um, my line managers always kind of took the, the the opinion of kind of hopefully we don't want to lose you, Andy, because you're brilliant. That would be nice. Um, but <laughs> actually, if, if this isn't for you or you want to go and try something new, I will support you all the way to get you where you want to be. Because at the end of the day, you being happy and doing what you do is more important. So that that's what we need. And if everybody's happy and doing jobs at the love, then, you know, the the, the business thrives from that in its in, in of itself as well. Um, we've, we've got a question that's come through. It maybe um, maybe it's more for uh, me and you, Alice, in this one where it says, "So how do you um, work through an apprenticeship alongside doing your your, your current role?" Good I'll question. Yeah, it is. <laughs> think about how to answer it. It, it will be for um, for Emily as well, and yeah. I think James has just joined us, Andy. Um, I don't right. know if you can see that, so I don't know if James wants to introduce himself and maybe see if he can answer the question because our apprentices all um attend not college the training provider comes in and they attend that together on in, in blocks of i think it's one week james do you do you want to help me with that yeah good morning everyone um sorry for being late i've been having a nightmare in the snow um <laughs> so but yeah so my name is james martin um i've been in the company now over a year um about a year and three months coming up um and like water networks operation so i'm out i'm out and about most days um solving problems and so yeah that that was a quick introduction to, to who i am and uh going, going back to the question it's um it's it's been good so what what we do is alongside our day-to-day role and our jobs we have been um four days a month um, we've been attending like a, a Zoom online diploma course, um, and we've been set time each month to to have these sessions online, where it's it's a bit like online learning, um, and that links in with our job roles because as part of that qualification, we have to gather evidence and write write up reports about what we do on the job. So the balance of the day-to-day job and the the qualification side and the coursework side along that matches in and, and goes together quite well um and again the the, the company and the managers have, have all been then supportive where if, if you need a bit of time to to get yourself on the computer um then there's no issues with that so there's it's it's been quite good to to do the the college work in the in the course side along with the day-to-day job um and it all goes in hand with with learning together. Thank you. I suppose it's worth um, saying as well that all all apprenticeships are different. So some some you may need to go into college, and and some you might do online studies, but some also might be learning a new skill or um, learning getting gaining new knowledge whilst you're on the job. And all of our managers are very supportive of making sure that everybody can do whatever they need to do to, to continue with their apprenticeship. So Alison, how did you do yours then in between? Because you 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 and Andrew were very similar where you were doing your job and then you did your apprentice. So how, how did you cope with it? How did you manage? Um, <laughs> a lot of hard work. Um, so taking every minute when I can and work and efficiently as possible. But because I had to go to college um for around about six hours a week and then I had assignments to do on top of that so uh, trying to apply as much knowledge as you can in work and to do that as well but it does take a a big commitment 
um, and you ha and you do have to work hard, but it's definitely worth it at the end. So it does it does feel worth it at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's um, for, for for mine. Um, I started mine in the kind of like September of last year, so it was already in the the full midst of COVID. So everything was online, which I think probably um, made it easier for me because. Um, I, I, I tend to like to do mine later on at night, so it's kind of like once kids are to bed and, and, and things like that, it's a bit quiet and, you know, I've, I've, I've got customers I need to deal with during the day, so I tend to do bits and pieces at night, but then I'll fit it into where I've got a little bit of a break or if something's been cancelled out my diary, I'll just do a quick hour here and a quick hour there, so although it's kind of like you get effectively eight hours a, a week to do it, I kind of I chunk it into bits, and, and I think Alison's right, it's kind of... Um, just being efficient with your time has has been great, but because it's online, I can kind of if um, if a meeting finishes 15 minutes early, I can jump on and just do a couple of things, and then I can go back to my next meeting. So it's that 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 online bit has made it really really um, easy for me to do. So I've, um, I've enjoyed it. Plus, it's it it's something that I enjoy anyway. I'm, I'm I'm a bit of a geek at heart, so it's kind of computers and things like that. It's it, it's right up my alley. So I don't you know it, it doesn't seem like work. It just seems like a good thing to do. Um, so I suppose um, one, one, it's probably the, the last question that we've got, unless anybody wants to drop another one on the on the on the question board. But sort of, um, so what happens when you complete your apprenticeship? Mm -hmm. So the great news is, so far we've had a hundred percent retention rate. So all the apprentices that we've had right starting way back in 2017, all the way through, and even some of that we've had recently have actually looked for permanent jobs within Northumbria Water, which has been great. And we, we don't stop people from doing that. So we encourage that if there's something there that. It, like Erin was saying, if it's something a bit different where you think, actually, I'm probably more suited to that role, then we encourage that as well. So we have um, people who join with us and you may not end up being in that role, as we said before, that the end. Right? If you do a water technician role, you might not end up being doing that, but you will end up, there will be something. If you are if you are doing the right thing and you are, your behaviours are the right kind of things that we're looking for, the passion's there, your curiosity's there, they're the kind of key things that we look for anyway when we look to recruit then we will we will make sure that your um, supporters to, to get a fixed position at the end of um, of your end of your apprentice. Definitely, because we want to keep you. We've got put all this effort into you. We want you. We want to keep you here. <laughs> exactly. Um, we've, we've had another one come through, um, and I think it's, it's probably applicable across the board. But um, so, so um, how do more uh, mature employees hear about apprenticeships and which ones are available? So I suppose yeah. how do we advertise them out? Yeah. Yeah. So again, um, whenever we've got opportunities for for apprenticeships, or we realise that there's certain skills that we need in the business that we might not have, then we'll promote our apprenticeship opportunities in the usual way, whether that be through our internal newsletters or our intranet site. Um, the exciting thing with that is that we are looking at the moment about what kind of upskilling opportunities there are. So for people already at Northumbria Water, how can they do an apprenticeship? And we should be going out in around June time to share what those opportunities could look like along with other development opportunities in the business. So, um, if somebody in water and is interested in apprenticeships, get in touch with one of us and we can obviously talk to you about that in a bit more detail. Excellent. Um, I, I suppose one of the other things is as well, we've got obviously the um, on our website, so um, uh, just to, to make things a bit clearer for people, so we, we the, the company's Northumbrian Water Limited, but we operate in the northeast as Northumbrian Water, and in the southeast as Essex and Suffolk Water. Um, so we we kind of um, the, the NWL bit we kind of actually term as NWG, which is the group structure. So um, if you go on to um, Google or any other um, branded search engine of your choice, um, if you just type in there nwg.co.uk forward slash careers, that will take you to the careers page. Um, there's a lot of information on there as well about who we are, what we do, um, and there's also a link to the, the NWG Academy as well. So you'll, you'll be able to find some information through that as well as um, jobs that we're just generally offering, um, offering out as well. So just um, you know, feel free to have a look on that as well. Um, just trying to think. I think that's the last of the questions that have come through, unless anything um, pop up. And we're, we're kind of getting there to the end of our time anyway. So um, I suppose there's one last thing to kind of say is that obviously the team are here to, to, to help apprentices, uh, apprentices get into our business. Um, so if you've got any questions, if you've got any queries, um, what you can do is if you if you drop an email to nwg.academy at nwl .co.uk, um, Alison and, and Alex will be able to pick that up and kind of point in the right direction or give you some uh, support or suggestions on, 
on how best to, to join our company. Um, there isn't any more questions in there, so I think we'll just probably draw that to a close. So, um, you know, thank you everybody for, for joining us today. We really appreciate you spending the time to learn a little bit more about us. Um, and uh, we'll, we shall say goodbye. So thank goodbye, you, everybody. James, to thank James you. and Emily. Yes, thanks, James. Thanks, Emily. Thank you. Bye. Cheers now. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.